Located 14 kilometers northwest of Adelaide, Port Adelaide is an industrial district undergoing rejuvenation. Over the past 10 to 15 years, Port Adelaide's residential and industrial sectors have been undergoing a dramatic rejuvenation and renewal in order to breathe new life into the area. This process can be described as gentrification, or the improving of a neighbourhood or district so that it conforms to middle class taste. Using data that we ourselves have collected, surveys and even interviews with industry workers, we aim to investigate how beneficial the Port Adelaide gentrification has been to residents, workers and the environment. To begin with, we made the treacherous journey out to the northwestern suburb and analysed the infrastructure in Old Port. A mix of administrative, cultural and residential buildings fill the limited spaces that aren't consumed by small business. And here is the aptly named Commercial Road. Uh, the street is littered with all kinds of businesses from cafes to law firms and as you can see it has quite a uh, popping uh, population. <laughs> There's lots of business going around here, uh, lots of people around. So a little update, something that we've noticed, uh, in the area that we've been assigned to, there are a lot of uh, lawyers for no particular reason. Obviously there must be a reason, lots of crime maybe in this area, we don't, we don't know. But it's just something that we picked up on. This building looks very bourgeois. This concentration of businesses in this small zone might lead you to believe the area is thriving, with both locals and tourists bringing revenue to the local economy. However, our first-hand experience revealed that this was not at all true as many of these businesses were empty with little to no foot traffic. Uh, so not even 50 metres from the uh, main drag out there, with, which is thriving with business, we have um, run down and uh, unused buildings as well as empty blocks of land. <laughs> While it may be true that we were visiting the area on a weekday, many of these commercial sites were cafes and still were deserted during lunchtime. These buildings had clearly been gentrified as a lot of them were in good condition or fairly new. This suggests that the rejuvenation in the area perhaps hasn't benefited business and workers as planned. Gentrification in the area has also aimed to benefit residents. Perhaps the clearest example of this is the new housing developments found in Newport. As the map shows, there is a remarkably high concentration of residential buildings in the area. The map, however, is misleading, as there were a few businesses in the area, however, most of them were empty. Nonetheless, the number of apartments was substantial. What was even more amazing was the lack of residents in such an area. Many of the new housing was for sale, showing that much of the development site was empty. This is displayed in this map from Location SA, portraying the population density of small areas. The zone outlined in green is Newport, and clearly has a low population density compared to neighbouring locations. This is unusual, as the data that we ourselves collected clearly shows that the area contains dense housing. The areas were modern and by the standards of the area, relatively bourgeois. There are a range of reasons why these homes were empty, from the environmental issues caused by nearby Brighton cement to the pricing. A realestate.com search revealed that small, two-bedroom apartments can be up to $600,000, which especially for the locals is a significant sum of money. To put it bluntly, gentrification in the poor area targeting residents has been majorly unsuccessful. To explore the environmental impacts of gentrification on the poor area, we met with representatives from the Australian Submarine Corporation, Mitch Bacon and Jeremy Roberts. In their talk, they stated that they take great care not to release harmful substances into the environment, and as a result, the water quality has improved. They also mentioned that there are several environmental groups that work cohesively, making sure the ecosystems around the Port River are healthy. It was also noticed that the development in the Newport area has begun again, with new blocks of housing being built. This is despite legislation forbidding development until the issue of toxic dust particles from the nearby cement factory is resolved. The development suggests that there has been improvement in this issue. From a glance, it seems as if gentrification hasn't affected the environment substantially. From the data that we have collected, it is easy to say that gentrification in the poor area has been unsuccessful. It doesn't seem to have benefited anyone. The businesses have very few customers and a lot of the new residencies are vacant. From what potentially biased company workers have told us, there hasn't been too many detrimental environmental impacts. Despite this, residents seem to like the developments on the whole and most rated them fairly highly in the survey we conducted. 
It must be said, however, that our methodology in this research task has not been ideal. In that brochure, Renewal SA, a branch of the state government, state that they aim to achieve the vision of more people living, working, investing and spending time in Port Adelaide. Despite how the locals responded to our survey, we believe that this has not been achieved. This is not to say that this goal will never be achieved, but for now, gentrification in the Port Adelaide area has not benefited residents nor business and workers.